everybody. It's really nice to be here. So uh, I watched the latest episode of WandaVision, and I noticed some people online were commenting that a lot of the shows that seemed to inspire the look of the previous episodes weren't in the dad's suitcase. You know, like the Brady Bunch and Family Ties, Growing Pains, they weren't in there. And I was thinking about it, and I realized that's because the stuff in the suitcase that we see was only what the dad couldn't sell which explains why who's the boss is in there. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised the thing wasn't packed solid with season one of Night Court. <laughs> but I think, I think that also explains why none of Wanda's fantasies were based around perfect strangers, because she's never seen an episode of that, because her dad can't keep it in stock. It constantly sells out, because of course, Sokovians love Mark Lynn Baker. He's like David Hasselhoff in Germany over there. Can't get enough of it. You walk up to any random Sokovian on the street, say, hey, buddy, what's your favorite movie? My favorite year. No, I asked your favorite movie. That's what I told you. Third base. <laughs> so a little later on in the episode, though, there's that scene where Wanda shows up at S.W.O.R.D. headquarters, and she wants to take custody of Vision's body. But I got to tell you, I kind of feel like... She showed up there expecting that S.W.O.R.D. was not going to cooperate. Like, I, I don't think she really thought she was going to be leaving with the Vision's body. And the reason I think that is because you'll notice she did not bring a truck. <laughs> she was just driving a, a four-door sedan. And she was parked pretty far from the entrance. What was her plan? Is she going to drag the Vision's body through the parking lot, then prop him up in the passenger seat so she could use the carpool lane? It's like, Wanda, that's what LMDs are for. <laughs> and the thing that struck me, I don't know if you noticed this, Wanda was driving a Buick. And I found myself wondering, you know, what, was General Motors really clamoring for that product placement? You know, did their PR guy say, okay, yes, we make all the cars in the Transformers movies, but we really want to appeal to the demographic of young immigrants with crippling depression. That's a growth sector right there. When I saw that that was the logo on the car, I, I got to think, because everything in the show is a clue or an Easter egg or something. And I was trying to figure out if it was significant, and it didn't seem like it was, and that feels like a missed opportunity. You know, if the, if the producers really wanted to be clever, they'd have had Wanda driving a Hyundai accent. Because then you can have a scene. Hey, Wanda, where's your accent? I parked it over there. But that also made me realize that this means at some point, Wanda got a driver's license. When did that happen? I mean, I, I'm assuming it was at some point between the end of Age of Ultron and the beginning of Civil War, but why was that a priority? You know, it seems like maybe if she'd spent a little more time practicing her energy manipulation and a little less time on unprotected left turns, things might not have gone so bad in Lagos. <laughs> if nothing else, though, I think it's probably for the best that Wanda was driving on the East Coast. You know, she probably learned to drive somewhere in the tri-state area there. Because if she was driving in Los Angeles and she came across the intersection of North Virgil, Sunset, and Hollywood Boulevard, there's enough chaos energy there, she could have rewritten the whole Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.